In episode 27 of Zero to Four Million, you will learn how Lover Kramer runs a video business and has written a book on productivity whilst studying for a law degree and his two top tips for productivity and becoming superhuman. Hello and welcome to Zero to Four Million, a startup's bootstraps journey to a seven-figure exit, where we track the progress of the virtual team-building platform, Virtual Valley, from idea to seven-figure exit, while sharing all the dirty secrets from the trenches of a bootstrap startup. By tuning in each weekday morning, you will receive an update on Virtual Valley's progress and metrics, understand how they solved a specific startup problem, learn about one awesome tool and resource they use to solve this problem, so you could do the same in your bootstrap startup. And now, welcome your host, Tom Hunt, founder of Virtual Valley, TEDx speaker, Dragon's Den failure, and location independent entrepreneur. Hello and welcome to episode 27 of 024 million. Let's have a look at yesterday or Monday's metrics we hit. 52 website sessions with the which is actually half of the average of last week so that's pretty low we got one entrepreneur lead on the blog we got zero team members hired and zero entrepreneurs signed up now i believe this is because the lack of focus on content marketing during the past week we had no guest blog posts posted during last week uh, which has been our main source of traffic to date and that of course is changing this week as yesterday i spent the majority of the day crafting a very long guest blog post for a website called robbyrichards.com that will be posted next week i'll obviously share that uh, or link that somewhere in this podcast so you can check it out it's all about becoming a an online consultant that's all for yesterday that's pretty much all i spent my time doing and Let's now jump into the content for the rest of the episode. And in today's episode of Virtual Valley, we are joined by our third interview ever. We have a man called Lover Kramer who's joined us to talk about building a team, outsourcing, and productivity. And before we jump into the interview, let's say hi first. Hi, Lover. Hi. hi. Thank you for having me. An absolute pleasure. Before we jump in, um, I just want to quickly explain about the Virtual Valley podcast and interviews. So this is for the, the, the readers, not for you, Lover, by the way. <laughs> the readers or the listeners? This is for the listeners. So I try to shy away from the Entrepreneur Interview podcast hype that seems to happen because it's really, really useful for exposure, but I, I want it to be something different. So I didn't want to interview too many people. I wanted to interview people that have a message that's relevant to the people that or to the Virtual Valley journey and the people that listen to this podcast. So the reason why we have Lover on the show is because he, or well, I believe he has achieved superhuman feats, hence the title of this episode. Um, and the way he has done that, which he will explain shortly, really resonates with the message that I believe in and that I have tried to build around Virtual Valley. So that is the connection. Um, and over the next 20 minutes, we're going to talk about how he's managed to do all these things. We'll talk a bit about productivity, productivity and also about the new book the Lover is soon to be releasing. How does that sound to you, Lover? That sounds very, very, very nice of you. I hope I can fulfill um, the message that, yeah. Okay, awesome. Can you give like a just a 30 second sort of intro to yourself and what you're currently doing just to give a context to the discussion? Yeah, so 30 seconds. Uh, we have launched um, already a couple of months ago a platform uh, that is called Why Not 3. Uh, it's a work-life balance platform for entrepreneurs. Uh, it's based on the workshop that I used to deliver already. We've delivered that workshop in four countries. Mm -hmm. 
And the book is a deeper inside, more practical tips and tricks on the whole stuff. And from there, we grew into a community, I guess. Um, and that's what we're growing right now. So we're growing a community of people that believe in the work-life balance uh, message that you can become more productive and do more by having that balance. So yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. So you kept within 30 seconds as well. Awesome. Can you explain sort of how you got into that? And I... Like you, you explained the story to me uh, yesterday, uh, but it it really makes sense. So it will, I think it will make a lot more sense to know why you're doing that. To if we understand the backstory. Yeah. So what happened was I was uh, in Germany for a conference. I was invited as a speaker, and we had a workshop work life balance, which was allocated to me very very randomly, I guess. And I had delivered at that time, I think, more than 10 plus conferences uh, where I spoke on stage, uh, usually about communication skills, because I used to uh, work for the Center for Body Language and Microexpressions. And I also did uh, leadership skills, um, stuff like that, because I, I was managing teams. And I specifically spoke for an organization called ISEC, which is a student organization, one of the largest in the world right now. And they, they center very much on the, on the message of leadership. But one thing that they tend to neglect is uh, the workload that ISEC brings. Uh, and as I started my entrepreneur journey, um, a lot of self-starters that don't delegate, I guess. So they do all the workload on their own, and sometimes they delegate delegate to family. Um, they tend to do the same mistakes that I noticed uh, those people in ISEC did. And so I delivered that workshop in Germany at the time, and it was for the first time that I delivered such an impactful workshop, I guess. What I mean with that is I delivered workshops where people had something tangible and practical from but I never delivered a workshop where people came to me literally and said that this had changed the, their lives and I got a couple of testimonials on video which is on the website and the stories they tell me are crazy it got to the point where I was watching those testimonials um, together uh, with my girlfriend and she was like, wow, this is really inspiring. And I was sitting there and saying, which workshop did they follow? Like, what, how, what did they learn? So I was very, very eager to get this out in the world. Um, also for me to remind myself constantly uh, that I don't need to super focus on wealth and constantly growing business, neglecting relationships and health, because that can be a very, a very dangerous story, which uh, is Partially the reason why I'm so passionate about it because I had a friend ending up in hospital because of stress symptoms. Um, and then after a while, we started, I started being more strict and telling her, look, you should really focus on your health. And I gave her a couple of options and I supported her throughout um, weeks on end for, for months. We're still doing it. And now her health is so much better. She's literally doing so much more stuff. Um, I think she she started getting more promotions in her company as well. She's a trainer. So yeah, that's why I'm so passionate about the, this whole thing. It was really impactful on me. And um, it's also a reminder for people like me and my friend who just worked so much and are close to burning out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... You're currently doing a lot of things. You're currently studying. Yeah, so... Yeah. Trying this or launching this productivity organization and running a online business as well. Yeah. My question to you is, how do you do all this? Um, so the biggest time consumer, obviously, is law school. Um, and... The other company, so the other company, I have a film production company uh, where I make uh, after movies for conferences and, and sometimes also commercials for companies. Uh, and the biggest consumer obviously is law school. So scaling the business takes, it takes a bit slower, I can imagine. 
But one thing that I do have to say is that if you want to become, if you want to go this journey is you need to have patience. So no matter how much money I throw at it, there is a natural line of patience that I need to take into account as well, because your company doesn't grow super fast overnight. There's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, for me, the companies were always a way to fund my studies. So from the start, when I founded the companies, the whole point was that I would be able to have enough free time and enough funds to be able to sit there for 10, 12 hours and just study law, um, which is obviously not something that you hear a lot, especially not in the entrepreneur world. Um, but for me, automation and delegation, it was one of the core values of, of what I stood for in my business and whatever task that might pop up, the first thought was, can I delegate this to someone who's better than me or someone who loves doing this work more? And that's a great question to ask, right? Yeah. I think a lot of entrepreneurs believe that, especially when they're starting out with a business, they need to do everything. Yeah, yeah. And it can often lead to the entrepreneurs doing tasks that it's that seem like they're helping their business and growing their business, but then the opportunity cost of them spending their time and energy doing those tasks actually means they could be growing faster if they gave it to someone else. Yeah, there's a book, uh, I think Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I think also he has a second book coming this year. Um, but Rich Dad, Poor Dad talks about this quadrant of four, four people, and you have the employees who pay a lot of tax, you have the the self-employed, they pay the most amount of tax. Then you have the business people and the investors. And what a lot of entrepreneurs that I see on this journey uh, tend to do as a mistake is that they think being entrepreneurial is becoming a self, uh, like a self-independent person. The issue with that is that you're going to pay a lot of taxes, and the governments, unfortunately, don't care that much for you. But if you're a business person, so that's like the third section of this quadrant, if you're a business person or an investor, everything you do is uh, good for the government, which means the chances of you being appreciated by banks more, the chances of you getting uh, tax breaks, the chances of you getting subsidies subsidies from, from the government is higher. And so the way you become obviously a business person is by creating jobs because if you don't create jobs, you're not doing that much for for the market. Um, and yeah, that's partially also the reason why it's important, I think, to get out of the mindset of doing everything yourself. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to touch on is you mentioned that you started the whole entrepreneur journey and wanted to spend time studying law. Yeah. Is that still the, the case? Is that still why you are running that video business or you started this productivity platform because you want to take uh, the, the value from those businesses in the form of money to enable you to spend time? Studying? Mm -hmm. could, you, could you repeat the question? That way it can completely grasp it. So, yeah, so, so, so you said you started out on this journey to, so you could buy yourself time to study law. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. the case now. So right now, um, the business has grown to be a lot bigger than I initially thought. So initially, it was just to pay the bills. Um, and then, which is a natural occurrence if you start scaling your business, if you start hiring the right people, um, you start being able to produce more and get happier clients. So at this point in time, what is happening is that I still love the law and I want to finish, of course. Um, I'm very stubborn in that fact that I'm not going to drop out because I don't um, believe in that. I believe in finishing what you start, which is very important, especially in this kind of sector where a lot of people start a lot but don't finish. 
And the law for me is the same thing. Everything I do about it gets me, um, it pushes my brain. It makes me absorb information more. It makes me understand how our society works. And it gives me more confidence going uh, further. So I will finish that part. Uh, but if I will actually go into a law career, that is another question. Uh, because the businesses, like I said, are scaling, they're growing, and they're getting really good clients. So it would be very, um, I guess, not stupid, but I should go deeper into the businesses, which is something I will do. And they're also my passions. And then what I realize is I can always, as a backup, do pro bono work and actually help people. So that is kind of how I decided I will tackle this from now on. I will start focusing more on my uh, companies, um, not stop the, the growing, not stop the growing and just, yeah, just focus on that part. It's, it's not really a perfect answer, but I, I just want to finish what I started. I don't want to stop... I don't want to stop in my tracks, not for anything that I start. So if I started this productivity platform, I'm going till the end. If I started my film production company, I'm also going till the end because I'm hanging out with the people that I want to hang out with. So I wouldn't stop that for the world. And the same goes for law. Um, understanding how everything works is one of my biggest things that I want to have for myself. I always want information. Okay, so I think it's going to be interesting when you finish studying and you have this wealth of time that you can invest into further building the systems that you're building. Uh, and what I like about you is that you're not, or well, you try to avoid working within the system as much as possible. So all of this time that is going to be released after you finish your studies, you will probably invest in building those two systems that we just discussed. So do you expect the growth to increase once you have finished your studies? Yeah, of course. Um, right now what's happening is um, my sales are getting bigger, but the quantity is not getting bigger because I can't handle the workload. Even though um, at one point we were a team of 13 people, um, even though that is happening, I still I can't process... Uh, too much things happening, of course, um, especially not with the law stuff that I need to process. So, for instance, um, so in the productivity platform, why not three right now? Uh, we just hired a second blogger, and she's amazing. Um, the issue with that is, and I told both of them, um, I can't proofread all of these blogs I can't proofread two blogs a week uh, right now. So, and it, to get a really good blog post, you should invest more time than a week. So, I give them extra time. I get higher quality blogs from them. And I have every week at least one blog that I need to proofread. So, there is a limit to what I can do. But understanding those limits is part one of the challenge because. Pushing when you don't know what your limits are is it's very dangerous. And my first thing that I teach all my clients is know where your limits are because only then can you start doing more. So I know that my limit is I, I'm not going to hire like a third blog, blogger right now because right now it's, it's not possible to do that. But the moment I graduate pretty much uh, from this, suddenly I open myself up to so much more potential and this training that university gave me which is the processing of information like so much that you can do with that suddenly you're so much more effective in this one hour that you do stuff and I've had to learn the skill to also be productive in, in one hour because I don't have that much time during the day to actually invest I guess I have to catch up with other entrepreneurs that are investing 10, 12 hours, and I have to do it in eight or seven um, in the evenings or in the early mornings. 
Something I want to pick up when you said that. You mentioned that you you can't review two blog posts in a week. Whereas it, it, it might not be that you can't, even though that you prioritize other things yeah. over reviewing the actual blog post in a week. Okay. Yeah. That is because you have the other priorities in your life, primarily getting a law degree. Yeah. So prioritize. Yeah. The way I do it in the workshop is I divide it into goals. So my goals right now are growing Why Not 3. Um, uh, it's growing my film production company um, and it's finishing my law degree. Now, I haven't mentioned, for instance, my relationship and what I uh, said in a previous podcast that I did with a friend of ours, Gun, is uh, because you can also combine stuff. So, for instance, my girlfriend right now is helping me with the retreat program in Why Not 3. And this, this gives us kind of an excuse to spend even more time building building something and we both love building stuff so suddenly if we're building together it's so much better for our relationship so yeah i do focus on stuff but for instance the reason i said not more than two bloggers is because even though why not three is a focus it's not the biggest focus i have a priority in focuses as well so I know that if I want to invest the, the right amount of energy into growing the book and the retreat program right now, uh, then I can't be processing too much blog posts. And then also I have the film production company and I'm processing a lot of videos there as well. We just got a project where I'm think yeah, we just finished a project where we edited a, a, about 130 videos and a month and a half so yeah there's a lot going on and i do need to prioritize so me making a choice is part of that understanding what my limits are and and yeah focusing on the right things i love what you said about uh, your point about leveraging two areas of your life in order to or like fulfilling or progressing towards two goals by doing one thing. And the way you connected the retreat for Why Not Three with spending time with your girlfriend, I think that's a really, really uh, awesome point and opportunity to, for people to get more things done. Um, so I think that's awesome. Um, okay, so what I'd like to do in the last sort of five minutes of the interview is sort of pick your brains for personal productivity tips. Okay. Yeah. So, specific. Actually, one thing that interests me at the moment is the, the morning ritual. Do you have any guidance for yeah on what to do in the morning? Yeah, definitely. So, so we have a friend uh, called Franz, and he invented uh, this thing called the habit sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really cool and it's free available. Uh, he's really cool in what he did in that habit sheet. So. I do tend to use the habit sheet very regularly, uh, but after a while, my morning routine kind of gets ingrained into me. So what I do for my morning routine is I wake up and I am horrible at waking up. Everybody that knows me and knows that part about me. Um, so I tend to do everything before I go to bed. That way, when I wake up, I kind of can fall out of bed and everything is just ready to go. I don't need to use my willpower to start packing and stuff like that. So everything is done before. Then when I wake up, um, the first thing that I do that actually wakes me up because it takes me a while to wake up, I, I have this uh, speech that I found on YouTube uh, by a, the founder of Mind Valley, And he has an app called Omvana and he has a, a six... Uh, six step meditation, the guided meditation thing. So every morning I tend to listen to this meditation thing and it, it's about 10 to 15 minutes and it wakes me up. And the reason it's six steps, he says, is because he kind of hacked this meditation thing um, to keep it short, efficient and simple. So I really like, like that about that. And so that, that's what wakes me up every morning. And it's stuff like uh, gratitude, thinking about what you like, 
thinking about forgiving people, thinking about having support and, uh, and thinking about your goals and vision. And you do that all in, in less than 15 minutes. So this is what wakes me up. And then I get up and uh, I have a daily creed, which I give away for free on my website uh, to anybody that su subscribes because that daily creed did a lot for me. Um, and I have, a, I have it printed and everything. So I wake up and I read that. Uh, and it's just a couple of sentences uh, that I read for myself out loud uh, and I repeat that and it takes me less than a minute and it just says stuff that I can accomplish stuff and that I shouldn't worry and that being scared is fine, stuff like that. You can check it out um, on my website. And then I have this thing which... Uh, Timothy Mark sent me, which is a present stone. And that's really good fun because I anchored a good feeling to that. So I just hold that anchor thing, uh, hold that present stone. And then once everything is ready, obviously I shower as well and stuff like that. Uh, I used to do um, Tibetan rituals, it's called, which is like six exercises. I tend to not do them anymore because I go to the gym now. So, but I remember it was very refreshing for me when I used to do that. And then I kind of start my day. Uh, so it takes me, I can do it in an hour or I can do it all in 20 minutes. So sometimes when I woke up late, which happens sometimes, I, I do it, like I do the, the meditation stuff in my ears uh, when, I, when I'm on the train or stuff like that. And you can you can even do the Tibetan rituals on the trains. They're not super weird, but you're you are gonna get some stairs. So I don't mind those stuff. So that yeah. Okay, so for someone listening that was considering their own morning ritual, what's the one tip you would give? Um, what I tell all my clients and everybody in the workshop is, uh, everybody has a chaotic life. I noticed. But the one thing that you can manipulate is your morning and evening. So if you have a chaotic life and you need some kind of consistency or you want to learn a new language or like you want a cool new habit, um, the only way if you have a chaotic life is to put it either in your morning routine or your evening routine. But I would do it and I would do it consistently and not give up after two or three months because the real results, they come after three to six months. Okay, so if they have something that they want to do, they should place it in the morning or the evening. Yeah. And then once they have done, they should commit to three to six months. Yeah, at least. Um, an example is I started Duolingo to learn German, and I know it's just a silly app, but I did not know German at all in August. I went to that conference. I got lost on a train ride there. Um, and I couldn't even communicate with the people. Um, and then I, uh, I got my girlfriend and she's German. And on Christmas, I'd been doing Duolingo every day, just a little bit, two or three um, uh, exercises. And then on Christmas, I could actually have a conversation with her parents, which was my goal. Obviously, it was broken German, uh, but my girlfriend was there to translate the hard parts but it was a, there was a flowing conversation and we had like a two, three hour conversation uh, with her parents, which is very interesting. So just being consistent and doing a little bit every day is, can change the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Like that success will probably not come from one event that's going to change your life, but from the small actions that you can take every day or every morning or every evening you would say um, and I never really thought about that point of if you do have the crucial thing don't try and put it in at lunchtime don't try and put it in in the afternoon because something will always be more urgent yeah. rather than that important time so place it in the morning or in the evening that's awesome okay so that's morning rituals I want to talk about one more area of productivity and I'm actually going to give you free reign to select okay so the most important productivity tip that you cover in your workshop? Um, the most important productivity trick, uh, I think I kind of mentioned that the evening and the morning routines are so important um, to do. Also, um, 
allocating your day to day, so creating this perfect productive day. So you go over your day and try to find some consistency. So for instance, certain hours you just use to study or to do business or stuff like that. And what happens then is that during those hours, no matter what, you turn off your phone, you turn off electronics, and you just do it. And 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 after that hour, you can then turn everything back on, but at least you've done in that one hour or two hours really productive, tangible work. Um, a lot of people have issues with focusing because they they have their phones on and their MacBooks on and the computers, everything is on while they're supposed to be studying. And so you, you get this side. This is so common in university. You go to the library and everybody's on their phone for six hours and then they come back and they say, yeah, I sat in the library for six hours. And then my question is, okay, but how many hours did you effectively study? And there's an app called Pomodoro that I know a lot of people use. Uh, and I tend to use it a lot too which is um, you click, it starts, it's a timer, and uh, every time you finish 25 minutes or 30 minutes, you get one Pomodoro. So this is a tracker to know how productive you actually are. So if you're sitting in the library for six hours, but you did two Pomodoros, that means you actually studied 50, 50 minutes. So the second tip, and that's uh, why I have the book coming out and, and the workshops, is track yourself. No matter what you do and what area you go, if you go to finances uh, and you have issues with your finances, start tracking in an Excel sheet. Um, this is what businesses do. They also have an Excel sheet or they have like a program where they track their finances. The same goes with relationship. Uh, me and my girlfriend have a relationship review every Sunday. Um, where we score each other and tell each other what we can improve and stuff like that. Uh, so we're, I'm pretty much tracking every part. Uh, and it's not weird tracking. It's just a nice conversation that you have or something you fill into your Excel sheet uh, for finances, for relationship, for your health, the same thing. Um, I, I can imagine that if you put into your Excel sheet, oh, I ate today a donut, and you do this 10 times, um, after the 10th time that you put in, oh, I ate a donut, you're going to start noticing a trend. So tracking is so necessary um, and actually allocating time to focus and, yeah, morning and evening routine. That was a bit more than one. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm hearing about the tracking part is tracking it enables you to become aware. And when you become aware of what you're doing, you can actually make more intelligent decisions. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna look at that. You're gonna look at that donut and think, "Oh, I don't want to write down I ate that donut." <laughs> okay, so to, to summarize on productivity, we've discussed morning rituals, and if you do have tasks that you believe are really important, they should be placed in the morning or in the evening. That's when you'll have time to do them. And then we went on to speak about tracking and awareness. And those tasks that you do think are important, you need to track that you're doing them in every area of your life that you believe is important. That will increase the likelihood that you will actually do them. Yep. And also we discussed about focus. So in order to, well, for, for me in business, in, in order, like the only sort of, reason that virtual value or any other business that I do will be successful is the ability to create value for the people that we serve, right? Yep. And in order to create value, you need to have focus and you need to spend time, focus time where you're just 100% focused on creating this value. Otherwise, if you're checking your phone, email and Twitter, you, you lose the focus and your ability to create value decreases significantly. So, when you are deciding upon those tasks that you believe will create value and add and improve the lives of the people that you serve, then you need to make sure you focus to actually create that value. Otherwise, you won't be able to do it. Yeah, especially if you work online, there's so much stuff out there. You want to create actual value that people can use. If you sit there and you do 50% of what you can deliver, it's not fair towards 
um, the users of your platform. So yeah, totally agree with what you said. Okay, cool. So we're going to have to tie it up here. But what I want to do is tell people where they can go to take the next step. Yes. So productivity platform. So um, we have one website, uh, very simple, why not three? So why the word, not the word, and then three, the number. Uh, so why not three.com? You can literally, you'll see there, there's a video explaining what's happening. And also you can just fill in your email there. Then you will be automatically put on the email list where I share every Friday a personal story. Uh, and you get a lot of goodies. You get a, a small ebook. Uh, with the top 10 mistakes that people make, you get my daily creeds um, and the output of the workshop that I uh, delivered to people. So this is the actual output that I give to people after my workshop. Okay, we'll link below so people can just click that link, jump over and start getting more productive. Okay, Lover, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>